Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies. please welcome Larry Ellison. Can we turn that up, that monitor? Thank you for joining us here this lovely Wednesday afternoon in San Francisco. All right. Uh, six years of engineering. You know, my first version of that slide was four years of engineering. <laughs> then I changed it. To, so it took a little longer than we had planned. But it was a huge, huge engineering project to build a complete and integrated suite. I'm going to go H, uh, the, uh, ERP, human capital management, CRM, all the different pieces built on top of modern technology, rebuilt on top of modern technology, complete, integrated, and finally here. Next slide. And it is a gigantic, it was a gigantic effort. Accounting, what used to be called human resources, human capital management, supply chain, projects, procurement, CRM, governance, risk compliance. Next slide, over a hundred separate computer programs, over a hundred separate products, all rewritten, all rewritten on top of modern technology. It was, it took us six years, but I think it was worth the wait. Next slide. No, uh, we didn't do this alone. Uh, from the very beginning, we started working with our customers during the early design phases, our PeopleSoft customers, our Siebel customers, our Oracle customers, our Hyperion customers. We talked to all of them and asked them what they wanted in the next generation of technology. And then we designed it and built it and showed it to them and they criticized it. And we worked again and reworked until we finished this six-year journey of rewriting all of our applications on top of modern technology to meet the needs of our most demanding customers. And we, we had 200 design partners, 200 testers, and now we have 200 live customers on top of Fusion applications during its controlled release period. Next slide. But that controlled release period is now officially over. All of these hundred plus modules, these hundred plus new products are generally available to all of our customers all over the world. And we have tens of thousands. I'd like to thank all of our application teams for designing a great product, building a great product, and sticking with it until you're finished. Of course, you're never really finished. There's going to be another version, another version, another version. But now we're delivering it to our customers. Human capital management, ERP, CRM, all those pieces are here today. Next slide. I'd like to go back six years to the very beginning of the project and review for all of us some of the design goals we had for Fusion. Why did we rewrite PeopleSoft and Siebel and Hyperion and the Oracle eBusiness Suite on top of modern technology. It was a huge effort. It took a lot of engineers a very long time to do this. Why did we do it? Why did we do it? What, what was wrong with Oracle, you know, or Oracle eBusiness Suite or PeopleSoft? I mean, they're a good product. They were market-leading products. They are market-leading products. And we continue to invest in them today and we'll continue to invest in them tomorrow. But we felt we had to move to a new generation, the next generation of technology, for very specific reasons. First, first, we needed applications that were designed not to run just on-premise in your data center, but we needed to design applications that also ran in the cloud. Now, six years ago, it wasn't called the cloud. 
The term cloud was actually popularized by Amazon.com's uh, EC2. The, it's a, the Amazon.com's Elastic Compute Cloud. They kind of invented and popularized the term. But before there was the cloud, there was SaaS. NetSuite, Salesforce.com, those guys. So what we really said, what the original slide really looked like, it was designed to run as a service on the internet, SaaS, and on-premise. But the new popular term today is cloud. So designed to run in the cloud and on-premise. That meant we had to rebuild, redesign, and rebuild our applications. Next, we wanted to build our applications on top of industry standard middleware using industry standard languages. No one had ever done this before. SAP to this day uses ABAP. A more modern system, Salesforce.com uses Apex. We thought that was a huge mistake. PeopleSoft used people tools. We used in eBusiness Suite something called Oracle Forms. Everyone used proprietary languages. Workday has his proprietary language. Sales where everyone had proprietary languages. We thought it was a very bad idea. So first thing we had to do was re-engineer our middleware so it could provide a foundation for our applications. And we did that as a two-step process. First, Fusion middleware. And then after we built the foundation, Fusion applications built on top of industry standard Fusion middleware and the most popular programming language in the world, Java. So when you extend the applications, when you add to the applications, you write in Java. When you link up your application, you know, uh, 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 this application to one of the applications you, bu you built, you use BPEL, another standard way of interconnecting the pieces. Because we have a service-oriented architecture, a modern service-oriented architecture. Nobody else does. SAP R3 sure doesn't. Salesforce sure doesn't. Workday sure doesn't. We didn't. eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, Siebel, we didn't have it either. These are relatively new concepts. So we had to re-architect our applications to move them to stand industry-based standards and a modern service-oriented architecture. We had, that's why we had to rebuild. That's why we took this six-year journey. Next thing, security. As if we're going to run this thing in the cloud, across the public internet, this thing has got to be much more secure than it ever was when it was running in your data center behind your firewalls. It's got to be much more secure. Now, everyone up until now had built their security into the applications. By the way, the eBusiness Suite security built into the eBusiness Suite. Siebel security built into Siebel. Salesforce.com security built into their application. SAP security built into the SAP application. We did not want to use application level security. We did not want to rely on each and every person writing application code to guarantee that your data and data center and applications were secure. We wanted the security to be a part of the underlying infrastructure. So when you built the application, it was guaranteed to be secure because the infrastructure was secure. So we didn't put security into Fusion applications. We upgraded the infrastructure so that the security is built into the virtual machine and the operating system and the middleware and the database and anything built on top of that infrastructure is secure. Whether we build the application, our application development teams build it, or you make extensions. It's secure because the underlying technology is secure, especially important in the world of the cloud and the public internet. And finally, we wanted to give this new 
suite of applications, a whole different look and feel. It shouldn't just be a dumb page with a bunch of icons in it, like a, like, like a Windows, you know, a, a Windows blue screen with a bunch of icons, do this, do that, do this. Instead, we wanted, when you logged on, when you walked into your office and you hit your home page, your welcome screen, whatever you want to call it, that first page would tell you the latest news about your business. Give you real information on the very first screen. And it will tell you, let's say you're a first level sales manager. It will tell you what happened in the you know, last 24 hours to the forecast. Uh, what deals got closed. Did, uh, what deals fell out of the forecast. How all, if you're a first line sales manager, how are all your direct reports doing? How are they doing? You know, how much did they sold versus what is their quota in the quarter? You get that information right on your first page. Plus, that's what do you need to know? What do you need to know right on your first page? Also on your first page is a list of tasks. What do you need to do? So-and-so needs to get, a, get an unusually large discount approved. Do you want to approve it or not? Uh, one of your managers wants to hire this sales consultant. Please sign their offer letter. So-and-so is requested to go on vacation for this two-week period. It's the two weeks before the end of the quarter. Do you want to approve it or not? Mark's shaking his head no. Well. So right away, the, the, your first page tells you the latest business, what do you need to know, latest news about your, you, your job, and what do you need to do, a complete task list a very different UI than we had in eBusiness Suite or Siebel or, or for that much what, the, what SAP has or what Salesforce has. Next slide. Okay, so if we have a suite of applications designed to run in the cloud, I guess we need a cloud. Next slide. So, <laughs> my first announcement today is announcing the Oracle Public Cloud. Next slide. <laughs> when you need a cloud, you just need a cloud. <laughs> Everyone's got a cloud, we need a cloud, okay. So our cloud's a little bit different. Our cloud's a little bit different. On the lowest level, it, it's both a platform, it's both platform as a service, and applications as a service. It is both. And the key difference, the key difference, and I keep coming back to this theme, is our cloud is based on industry standards and, and supports full interoperability with other clouds and with your data center on premise because we all share the same standards. Just because you go to the cloud doesn't mean you forget everything you learned about information technology over the last 20 year, years. You don't say, Who, we don't need standards. We don't need interoperability. We're in the cloud. What good is that? Well, we think, if anything, standards and interoperability are even more important when you're in the cloud. Security is more important when you're in the cloud. So we have two levels. You'll see uh, the, uh, the Oracle Public Cloud at the lowest level has got a series of platform services, a database service, a Java service, a data service, actual information, not database, but the actual data itself, a data service and a security service all built into the cloud infrastructure. And then on top of that foundation, we put our fusion applications, or you put your custom applications or your extensions to our fusion applications, all built using the underlying platform services. The underlying standards-based platform services. Next slide. All right, the database service. You can take any existing Oracle database that you have and move it to our cloud because the database service 
in the cloud is like the database service in your data center. You can just move the data across and it runs unchanged. Oh, by the way, and you can move it back if you want to. Or you can move it to the Amazon cloud if you want to. You can move your data between our cloud, someone else's cloud, your data center back and forth and back and forth again. You can do your development and test on our cloud and go production in your data center, move the production system in your data center to Amazon and then back uh, uh, to, your, to your premise and nothing changes. All, everything is portable. Your data is portable because everything we do is standards-based. Everything we have that runs in our cloud runs in Amazon's cloud and other clouds that are standards-based. And in your data center. Next slide. The Java service. When you want to extend our applications or build a custom application, you write it in Java. Industry standard Java double E. You have an existing Java program in your, in your data center right now, you can move it to our cloud. You can build a, a Java application in our cloud, move it back to your data center or the Amazon cloud or the IBM cloud or any other cloud or any other data center that, re, that, that supports industry standards. Oh, by the way, don't try to move that Java double E application to the Salesforce cloud. It won't run. And don't, though they say, oh, we have Heroku. We just bought Heroku. Heroku, we just bought Heroku. It runs Java. Well, no. It doesn't run Java doubly. It, it has part of the Java application. It's kind of a Salesforce version of Java that only runs in Heroku. So if you try to take a Heroku application and move it to your data center, it won't work unless you buy Heroku. It's not standards-based. Our cloud is standards-based. Next slide, please. Okay, famous quote. I'm not sure where I heard it. Not sure where I heard this, but you know, it's, it's ringing in my mind. Someone very famous in the cloud business said, beware of false clouds. That is such good advice. <laughs> I could not have said it better myself, but I'm going to say it again. Beware of false clouds. There is a huge difference between clouds and false clouds. Our cloud is based on industry standards. Java, BPEL for integration, XML, Groovy, web services, every, every uh, easy, easy to interconnect applications in our cloud to applications, the Amazon cloud to applications in your data center, all using standards. At Salesforce, well, if you want Apex, the only place you can get it is Salesforce. It is unique to Salesforce. There's only one set of computers in the world that run Apex, and that would be Salesforce. You want to build your applications in Apex, you better run them in Salesforce forever, because that's the only place you can run them. Heroku is not industry standard Java. If you build something in Heroku, you can't move it. It's not a Java EE compliant application. It's a, it's a derivative of Java. Force.com, you're right in Apex. Again, all of this stuff is non-standard. All of this stuff is, is, is unique to Salesforce.com. It only exists in one place, in Salesforce.com. Now, if you don't care, fine. But understand, you're committing yourself to life to run that application at Salesforce.com because it doesn't run any place else. You can't move it any place else. You can abandon it. You can write it and say, oops, you know, I just give up, but you can't run it any place else ever. And you can't build things in your data center and move them to salesforce.com. That doesn't work either. You're not happy with salesforce.com, you can't move to Amazon. You can't do anything. You know, salesforce.com cloud is kind of, you know, kind of sticky. You know, it's kind of the ultimate vendor lock-in. 
You can check in, but you can't check out. <laughs> I like to think of it as the Roach Motel of clouds. <laughs> now that is a false cloud. Imagine, like, it's like an airplane. You fly into the cloud and you never get out. <laughs> it's not a good thing. With Fusion applications, with Fusion databases, they run in our cloud, they run in your data center, you can move them back and forth, no problem. With Salesforce.com, it is a false cloud. It's good, it's good for Salesforce, not necessarily good for you. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I said we have a database service based on standards. We have a, 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 a Java service based on standards. We also subscribe to lots of data. You can, as I said in the first thing, you can, you can load your data into our cloud, move it from your data center here. Uh, but we also subscribe to a lot of useful data that you might want to use in our cloud, like the Dun & Bradstreet data or census data. Uh, you know, data extracted from uh, a, a number of social networks. Uh, lead, lead information, we, we're, we're gonna populate our cloud with a lot of useful data for our customers, so you don't have to go out and make lots and lots of separate deals to subscribe to this data. You'll be able to repurchase this data from us, or resubscribe this data from us right on our public cloud and feed that data into your applications, whether they're Oracle Fusion applications or applications you wrote yourself the data service on the public cloud. Next slide. Uh, it's a monthly subscription. You go to the Oracle store, you sign up, you can use your credit card. Within minutes of signing up, it's instantly provisioned, instantly provisioned, and you're up and running with a database, with the ability to write Java programs, uh, you know, uh, with, the, uh, with the ability to run Fusion applications. Very important aspect about our public cloud. It's elastic. Ela Amazon thought elastic was so important, such an important characteristic of the cloud, they put it into their name. It's called the Elastic Compute Cloud. All elastic means is if you're running a long-running report or, you, or it's the end of the quarter and you need more compute capacity or more, or more storage, you get the additional compute capacity, you get the additional storage automatically. It, it, it stretches, it's elastic. And when you're through, through using that capacity, it shrinks back down. You only pay for what you need. And that's how the Oracle Public Cloud works. It's fully elastic. You can expand it instantly, you know, for a couple of days at the end of the quarter and then shrink it back down. You only pay for what you use. It's very different than a cloud that's rate limited, that's capacity constrained, where they cancel your long running report because it's using too much too much CPU power, like over at salesforce.com. They actually cancel your reports. They monitor your reports, and if they're taking up too much compute power, they cancel them. We don't do that. It's elastic. They have no choice. They can't add capacity. They can't let one, one runaway report slow down their host system, so they have to cancel it. Ours is very different. It's elastic. We don't have that problem. And of course, you use Java to develop your own apps, extend Fusion apps, et cetera. Next slide. Okay, uh, the Fusion suite is very unusual. It's a complete and integrated suite of applications, and it runs both on uh, cloud and on-premise. Uh, if you go, you know, SAP, our biggest application competitor, has a large suite of applications called R3. It's had several names, but still basically R3. Uh, and it really is designed only to run on-premise, like Siebel or uh, some of Siebel stuff, uh, uh, and e more like eBusiness Suite and PeopleSoft. Now, there are a bunch of new cloud companies that do route, you can buy software as a service over the internet, like Salesforce.com and Workday for human resources or human capital management, Taleo for talent management, but these are siloed separate applications. Fusion apps are the first complete and integrated suite to run in the cloud. First one. Took us a while, six years, a big job. And of course, the same exact code, the same exact code runs on-premise. 
So if you're doing a, again, you're doing an implementation, you can, you can do your test, your development and test in our cloud, and then when you're ready to go production, you can move it back uh, to your data center if you want to, or leave it in our cloud. Your choice. Next slide. But you have a choice. The key thing is you have a choice, and I'm pro-choice. Next slide. The guys at Salesforce, they're not pro-choice. They think you should run everything at Salesforce. Okay. Uh, Service-oriented architecture. So when you connect the Fusion applications, you can have some, by the way, you can have some of the Fusion applications, you can have CRM or your Asian, asia Pack CRM or pieces of, of the stuff in the cloud. You can have others, other stuff on premise. It's all linked together using industry standards like BPEL. It's all, it's all, it's, they're all web, everything's web service. Everything is a web service. Very easy to connect these things with each other. Cloud on premise. Fusion applications to your custom applications. Very easy to interconnect all this stuff using standards. Salesforce doesn't have any of that stuff. Everything they have for linkage is proprietary. Force.com, write a custom program in Apex, and we're rock and roll, let's go. Everything's write a custom program in Apex. Next slide, please. Amazon.com, again, is, when you, when you sign up to Amazon.com and you get resources, you get a, some number of virtual machines. That's how we allocate capacity. Certain amount of disk space, virtual machines, and you, your applications and your data run in your personal or your company's personal, isolated, in the best sense of the word isolated, virtual machine. Salesforce has a different idea. They say, why don't we put everyone's data and put it in the same database? We wrote the database. We think that's a really bad idea. Unless it's actually good if you want to look at your competitors' leads or something like that. That's a very bad security model to put everyone's data in the same database. It's called multi-tenancy, and it was the state of the art 15 years ago when they started. I mean, it really was the best we could do 15 years ago. I have no problem with them starting with multi-tenancy. It was a good idea 15 years ago. This is 2011. All the compute clouds, all the modern compute clouds are virtualized, use virtualization as part of their security model. We give you a separate virtual machine. Your data is in a separate database. Your data is secure. You get capacity on demand because you're virtualized. They don't have any of that. They put your data at risk by co-mingling it with your competitors' data. And God knows whose data. Next slide, please. All right. True clouds versus false clouds. Some key questions to ask. If you really want to figure out, okay, what, so what should I ask someone who's a cloud salesperson? Say, use my cloud. Say, no, use my cloud. Use my cloud. No, use my cloud. Okay, it's going to be confusing. All right. Simple question. If I write an application in your cloud, can I move it to another cloud? If I move, write an application in, in the Salesforce cloud, can I move it to Amazon? If you write in Oracle, you can move it to Amazon, you move it on premise and back. You write it in Salesforce, Roach Motel of Clouds. <laughs> Virtualization. Is my data just kind of mixed up, smushed together with everyone else's data in the same, in one or a big Oracle database with everybody, including my competitors? Yep. Is that a problem? <laughs> Works for us. We like it because we have to buy less database. It's a really bad idea. We keep your data secure, your applications separate in your own virtual machine. So is your data safely stored in a secure separate database and a separate virtual machine? Oracle, yes. Salesforce, uh-uh. 
And finally, is if I need, if I need additional capacity, if I need additional capacity, um, do I just get it automatically? Does, you know, it, uh, or, or do you cancel my work? With Oracle, with the Oracle Public Cloud, you get elastic capacity on demand. Whatever, whatever you need, you get automatically. When you're through using it, it shrinks. You only pay for what you use. In Salesforce, you use too much capacity, we're going to kick you off the machine. True cloud, false cloud, you decide. Next slide. Okay, back to our original design goals, specifically the last design goal. Remember, this is, these design goals are six years old. And we said we want to build a modern user, user interface with business intelligence and analytics, business intelligence and analytics built in, not added on. So again, if you're, if you're a sales manager, on the very first screen you see the current state of the forecast, how, what's been sold, what's, you know, how, how your direct reports are doing, what the, how, how the pipeline looks. You get all of that data right on your screen and a list of tasks. What do you need to know? What do you need to do? We still think that's right. It was six years ago, but things have changed. Next slide, please. Over, over the last six years, social networking has been a critical new technology in redefining on the, the way people interact with computers and interact with each other. And we think this has huge implication on how we build modern applications. Next slide. So, we built a social network. My second announcement of the day, an additional the Oracle Public Cloud, we're announcing the Oracle Social Network. Because we realized over the last six years, the biggest thing that had changed, the biggest thing that had changed in computing was social networking, and we would build the applications differently. Now, we realized this a while ago, fortunately, not just last week, uh, you know, that we would build the applications differently in light of social network technology, and that we had to build our own social network, and we did and we had to integrate it with all of our applications. CRM, ERP, HCM, governance, everything. And, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate how that social network works. With built-in web conferencing, document sharing, ability to network amongst people. So next slide, please. So we, we changed our user interface goals. By the way, this is the only goal that we really changed over the past six years. So it's not merely what do I need to know? What do I need to do? What do I need to do? It's who do I need to work with? And then we've got to enable you to work together as a team. And, we're gonna, and we do that via the Oracle social network built into each and every one of those 100 plus Fusion applications. Next slide. Um, I, I'm going to go through this very quickly because I'm, uh, let's see, I've been up for 26 minutes, is that right? Thank you, I'm just checking, see, see how I'm doing. I've got a demo. I'm going to do my own demo, it's going to be very exciting. <laughs> a little nervous about this. Uh, so, uh, but I wanted to give you a look, just a, a look, We're gonna, I'm going to show you some HCM applic uh, application screens. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining them because I'm going to explain the, the social network and the new user interface in the demonstration. But I want you to just look at how different this looks. This is our person gallery. It's Maria Williams. Uh, you can see her social network, the people she works with. Uh, over, over on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, there's, uh, you can see that you know c currently she's uh, she's in system support. Uh, support, uh, that, the name of her manager. She's currently away at a conference. So a very familiar. I mean, the user interface is very different than most applications that you'll see. Next slide. Again, another, another HCM uh, ap application. Here I want you to look uh, kind of on the right-hand side. Uh, it's my ta something called My Tasks. And the, so you get a task list, a list of things to do 
I said, you know, you tell you all the things. What do I need to know? What do I need to do? You get a task list with the things to do. You click on those, and that's why you go to the application. You know, should I sign this offer letter? Click, and you can, you can approve the offer. Can I pr impr approve the vacation? So on. Next slide, please. So, you, so it's not only what do you, I need to know, what do I need to do, it also is how you navigate when you decide to do it. How do you make the approval? So the information in the, is actually the menu and how you navigate through the system. Okay, uh, because we have a, a HCM system throughout, uh, you use, uh, in the social network, you use, among other things, you use your organization, that's how you navigate through your organization. But you can create additional networks of people you work with. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is, this is another HCM talent, mani uh, talent management slide. Again, I, uh, I'm going to start the demo in a couple of seconds, but I just want to give you a feeling for, for how different this is from what we produced before and the competition. Next slide. Uh, and of course, of course, all of the Fusion applications, and I mean all of the Fusion applications, run not only on desktop computers, they also run on mobile devices like iPads and iPhones and Android and, and such. Next slide. Oh, hold it. Stop for the applause. Back up one slide. And, okay, please. Uh, mobile devices. <laughs> mobile devices like iPad and iPhone. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Next slide, please. Just so you remember,